Spooky season is almost upon us, and if you spent any time playing horror games from the PS1 era to about the end of the PS2 era, you know what that means. That's right, tank controls. Tank controls are a control scheme in which the player controls the character's movement relative to the position of the player character, as opposed to the usual in 3D games in which the player moves the character relative to the position of the camera. Okay, but what does this actually mean? It means that if you press up, your character will always walk forward, left or right always turns your character in that direction, and down will cause your character to backpedal. Compare this to basically any other 3D game, where the controls always move you in the direction you press, regardless of where the camera is pointing. The camera here is the key. Many, if not all, areas have a fixed camera position, and moving off the screen tends to change the camera angle. The first 3D game to utilize tank controls from a perspective outside first person was a strange little 3D platformer called Alpha Waves, released in 1990 for the Atari ST family of computers. Alpha Waves was also probably the first 3D platformer, but that's another video for another time. At any rate, Frederick Raynal, the man in charge of Alpha Waves' DOS port, would go on to create 1992 survival horror classic Alone in the Dark, using the control scheme he helped port over from Alpha Waves. Alone in the Dark utilized pre-rendered 2D backgrounds with 3D objects, and since camera angles shifted often, tank controls helped the player maintain their control over Alone in the Dark's protagonist. From then on, tank controls became the golden standard for the survival horror genre, and even saw some use in a few other games as well. Over the years, I've heard a lot of complaining about tank controls, and it's likely due to it being an uncomfortable control scheme that just wasn't used in many games, and as such, players just weren't used to it. I'm here to tell you that tank controls are not only not bad, but are extremely effective in enhancing the experience of horror games. Hell, there's even a couple of good non-horror games that use them to great effect. But I digress. Let's talk about the obvious point that I've already brought up, the camera. Since your control scheme never changes in regards to the camera, it means the developers can do a lot of really interesting things involving perspective and not have to worry about the player feeling disoriented by a shift in camera. Additionally, it allows the developer to create interesting cinematic shots. Let's look at an example. Imagine a room leading into a foreboding long hallway, but the developer wants to angle the camera upwards when you enter the hallway to create an unsettling shot. You can absolutely do this in-game without tank controls, but if you want it to be seamless, for a second, the player character is going to be running into the hallway wall. Tank controls mean your character will always be moving forward, regardless of what the camera wants to do. Super important if, say, a monster or something is chasing the player. You're not losing valuable time readjusting your controls. This melds the artistic and the gameplay into one cohesive experience. Grim Fandango designer Tim Schafer chose this system as it allowed the developers to create cinematic camera cuts without disrupting the controls, while Shinji Mikami, director of the first Resident Evil, chose to use the fixed camera perspectives and tank controls to make the game scarier. He explained that in this way the player could not see a zombie coming, yet he could still hear its footsteps without knowledge of its position. These decisions ultimately enhanced the experience, I'd argue. Since these games are generally puzzle games, or at the very least have puzzle elements, the devs can use interesting camera angles to draw the attention of player to key items, puzzle elements, or perhaps even to draw attention away from something obvious, or even set up scares or enemy ambushes. Since tank controls are used in 3D games, it can be a huge draw on resources and development time to have to 3D model rooms and the objects in them. Resident Evil sidestepped this problem by using pre-rendered backgrounds for rooms. And man, they look gorgeous. Again, you can have games without tank controls with pre-rendered backgrounds, but combine this with interesting camera angles and seamlessly integrate it into gameplay, and you have a recipe for an immersive, good-looking game that's easy on the hardware. In many horror games, you tend to play as an everyman-type character. Rarely do you have superpowers or a combat specialist of some sort. Or at least if you are a special forces-type character, this is likely the first time you're experiencing demonic, zombified horrors. To put it lightly, I imagine you'd be at least a little shaken in the face of unfathomable horrors, especially if those horrors are specifically preying on your subconscious. Point being, tank controls are not buttery smooth, and I'd argue that these controls, when you're forced to juggle them, like in combat, help to further sell the psychological state of the character. You know how hard it is to headshot a zombie in the first Resident Evil? I like to imagine the character's hands are shaking. Maybe they've taken some damage and they just can't seem to aim straight. It just makes sense to me, and it adds to the difficulty. A lot of horror games start to lose their scare factor when the player starts powering up, and tank controls can make it so that the player never feels too powerful, even with a full arsenal. Nowadays, tank controls are an antiquated thing of the past. 
the only way you're going to play a game with tank controls is by going back and revisiting some of horror's greatest gems. First person and over the shoulder view now dominate the horror genre, and that's not to say it's not to great effect. I just wanted to take a moment to recognize this strange, fun little control scheme that often goes overlooked or outright despised. Huge shout out to all my patrons. You guys are the best. With your support, I'm motivated to keep on making the best quality videos I can. If you want to see yourself here, help support the channel, and maybe even score some exclusive Cyberfile merch, my Patreon is in the description. Thanks again everyone, you really are the best. Hey, thanks for watching! Don't forget to subscribe for more Cyberfile content, and if you like this video, show me with that little thumbs up button. If you liked this video, you might like one of my other videos. You can click right on the boxes to jump to them. Cyberfile, offline.